In just a few hours, the moon will pass completely in front of the sun. That event called totality, casting a shadow about 70 miles wide. The so-called path of totality spanning 14 states from Oregon to Charleston, South Carolina, where we find World News Tonight anchor David Muir. Good morning to you, David, in one of my favorite cities. It is a great city. It's going to be a little dark here come later today, though, Aim. And if you had a magic marker and you started in Oregon and went right across the country down to South Carolina, that is the path of this total solar eclipse. We haven't seen a total solar eclipse here in the U.S. since 1979, but here's the really cool part this morning. We haven't seen one travel from coast to coast in this country in 99 years. The skies will darken. You'll see that corona around the sun, but a few other things will happen, too. Temperatures will drop about 10 to 12 degrees and watch the animals. The birds get very confused. It's going to be a sight. Infinite miles of cars, millions of people descending upon small towns like Madras, Oregon. So many like 10-year-old Amico, eager to see the day turn into night. I just think that it's going to be really fun to see it because it's the first eclipse I've, I'm going to see. A total solar eclipse happens somewhere on Earth about twice every three years, often in remote areas, but this time the first one on the continental U.S. in nearly four decades. This is an ABC News special. Live coverage of the solar eclipse. The date, February 26, 1979, at the news desk, Frank Reynolds. Good morning. This is indeed a special events broadcast of a genuine special event. The last total eclipse of the sun over the continent this century. Onlookers back then peering through what was considered protective eyewear. All eyes were on the sky in Mary Hill, Washington. The heavens there beginning to darken. Then that awesome sight. The moon blacking out the sky and minutes later, the light returning bathing the crowd. Not until August 21st, 2017, will another eclipse be visible from North America. That's 38 years from now. And that day has come, and here's how it'll work. Beginning around 10:15 Pacific, the moon will move directly between the sun and the earth, casting a massive shadow that will briefly darken areas in 14 states, along what's called the path of totality, 70 miles wide and 3,000 miles long. It'll take about one hour, 33 minutes, and it'll be the first time in 99 years that a total solar eclipse will span the entire continental U.S. Oh, my God! Look at that! Some hoping to spot it from the air, like these passengers did on board an Alaska Airlines flight last year, far out over the Pacific. Viewers along this line in Makanda, Illinois, will experience the longest amount of darkness. Two minutes and 40.2 seconds. And Hopkinsville, Kentucky, dubbed Eclipseville. We're going to view it underwater. That's right. Scuba divers watching with the fish. And these NASA pilots chasing the eclipse in two retrofitted bombers with telescopes mounted in the nose. We'll go into total darkness for about four minutes for each aircraft. And just as Frank Reynolds promised all those years ago, we'll be here through it all. May the shadow of the moon fall on a world at peace. And ABC News, of course, will bring you a complete report on that next eclipse 38 years from now. And who knew we'd be the ones fulfilling Frank Reynolds' promise all these years later, but we are proud to be here with an incredible team from ABC News, meteorologists and reporters across this country this afternoon to witness it with you, 1 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC. Set your DVR if you have to head out to work. And Amy, keep this in mind. The moon shadow travels so fast across this country at speeds of uh, 1,800 miles per hour on average. It'll take about an hour and 33 minutes to get from one end of the country to the other far faster than a commercial jetliner, but we'll be there every step of the way. And we will be watching, David. Thanks so much. And speaking of meteorologists, we've got Ginger, who is in Nashville, the largest city in the path of totality, with more on how weather conditions will affect the eclipse. Good morning to you, Ginger. Good morning to you, Amy. This could end up being one of the most important forecasts of my life because all it takes is one cloud and that obscures your view if you're in that path of totality. Behind me, you see the honky tonks. They're all quiet now. That will not be the case. I want to take you to the map as to when and how this is going to happen cloud cover wise. Right now, if you see green on the map, you are looking good as far as the eclipse goes. That's from parts of Oregon. As long as that marine layer stays away in the morning. Lincoln to Jefferson City, those plains, you get a little bit of storminess and some high clouds at least. Nashville's looking good right now. We might see some daytime heating clouds, but Charleston out of the whole map not looking as great. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.